Hello everyone and welcome to another workshop in the Polaris Hackathon series. Today we have a special workshop on smart contract programming with Java. With us is Michael Bucha, a software developer at Axe Labs. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your work, Michael. Hello everyone. Nice to have you here. I'm Michael. Uh, I joined Axe Labs more than two years ago and thus I've also been in the Neo ecosystem for more than two years now. Um, yeah, I'm mainly responsible for the Neo3j SDK and compiler, and I'll show you today how to develop a smart contract and test it with, with Neo3j, yeah. Fantastic, and are you ready to start your presentation? Sure, yeah. So here, a quick overview, what we're gonna look at, First, I'm going to show you how you can set up your Neo3j development environment. Then we're going to develop a smart contract using Neo3j together. We'll go through some basic concepts like setting the initial stor storage when deploying the contract. Then we'll go through some methods to do a managed contract ownership, how you can manage that only one address, for example, can, can uh, manage the whole contract and own it, then how to change storage entries, how to receive a NEP17 token on the contract, and how you can withdraw it again. And the last example, how you can call another contract from your own contract. Then. We're going to test this smart contract using Neo3j's test framework. And for that, we're going to use the Neo3j SDK to interact with the contract and then assert that the returned values are indeed correct. So let me first switch to the boilerplate repository we have set up. It's, uh, you can find it in the Neo3j organization. Basically, it's just a repository to provide you the, the minimum uh, necessary code so you can get started. If you want to make use of this and, and start coding with Neo3j, you can just either clone it or you can even use this template and create your own repository from it so that it's not fork, but rather just your own repository that starts with that template. And before we go to the code, we have another repository that's the examples Java repository. You can find a lot of examples in here from simple contracts also to, to other um, RPC calls or how you can manage keys with the SDK. Last but not least, our external documentation, neo3j.io. You'll find almost everything you need in here from dApp development and smart contract development to tutorials and examples and Javadoc. Whenever something is not here, feel free to, to reach out to us on, on Discord or open an issue on GitHub. So yes, then let's, let's get started. You have to check if you have Java 8 installed. Then you have to check if Docker is running. So we're good. Then you can see here that the structure of the project is we have a deploy module, a main module, and a test module. In the deployment module, you have deployment configuration, as I've said before, the main, the contract, and in the test, you have the test. Then we have a build Gradle file here. As you can see here, we have version 3.16 for the Gradle plugin. I'll come back to that. And then here, what we need is the dev pack 3.16 to develop contracts. And then for the tests, we need the devpack tests, which also has a dependency to the SDK. So we can make use of that. 
So let's dive into the contract. I've set up a small contract here. The class Hello World Smart Contract. You can add annotations on top of that contract. For example, this add display name, which basically just renames the contract. So the contract in the end will not have this name, but have this name. If you just leave that out, leave that away, then the, the name of the contract will be the class name. Then you can add manifest extras, which are basically just key value stores. And here I've just set the author to, to Xlabs. Then if you, for example, if you want to, to implement a NAP17 contract, you can just add a supported standard annotation and then neo standard and use the neo standard NAP17. Also, if you want to allow the contract to call another contract and change the state on that contract or allow a further call, you can set a permission here. And as you can see here, you can set a contract, just a string, uh, just a custom, custom uh, script hash and what methods. Or you can also just allow, for example, the native contract gas token like this. We won't need that for this contract, but you know what to do. So first what we need is a deployment method. You can annotate it with add on deployment and then it will automatically take this method as the deployment method. So it doesn't really matter what you call the method. It just needs to, to have this annotation and needs to return void, void and take these two parameters. So first we'll just make use of this static variable here. That's a, a key to store the owner on the storage. So we'll just set the contract owner up on deployment so that when you deploy, you're already set as owner. So for this, we can make a, sorry, a second. You can make a put and then in the put you have you can uh, choose the storage context, get the storage context. This basically is just the, the context that your contract will, will manage. Only your contract will be able to, to access and change the storage in that context. Then the key and the value, which is data in, in and here, as you can see, it's an object because we don't really know here what, what you will pass in the deploy method. That's why we just use object. So you have to cast it here to hash 160. Now we want to, to get the contract at uh, the owner. So we'll write a static method. You can remember that you can uh, note that every method in in a smart contract in, in Java has to be static because there's no actual instance of the contract in, in, in the sense of the JVM. So we want to return a hash, the owner, and then get contract owner, no parameter. And then we want to return storage that get and then we want the read only context to just to make sure that nothing can be changed on that that uh, context and then the key now this here is a byte string we want to return a hash 160 so we can just create a hash 160 from that in the end, here 
it won't change much because underlying on the Neo VM, this will just be a byte string. But on Neo3j, we've added these types for to to add more functionality. For example, so you can check whether an object is a valid hash hundred sixty or it's the the zero script hash. And now we want to change. Oh, sorry, I I forgot. We have you may have already heard from from that uh, that name. A method can be safe. That means no storage will be changed. So if you if you invoke it, nothing will change the state. So you don't really need to issue a transaction on that if you just want to call that method directly. You can just invoke or use an RPC invoke function and read from the contract. Then we want to change the, the contract owner. For that, we create a method that doesn't return anything, but changes the, the contract owner. This requires a hash 160, that is the new contract owner. And now, as I've said before, this is just, it's not really a hash 160, but it's a byte string. So we can make some checks whether it actually is a valid 100 hash 160. For example, that mainly that it has the, the right length. And we can make use of what I've just shown. If it isn't a valid hash 160, then we can throw an exception and tell invalid hash 160 value provided. Then, of course, we also want to check that only the contract owner is able to, to change the contract owner. Otherwise, everybody could anybody could come and, and, and do that. So we want to check that we want to do a runtime check witness and get contract owner. If that fails, then we'll throw another exception with no authorization. Finally, if that all passes, we can overwrite. We can just use put storage get context. This time it's important that we get this context so we can actually change the context, change the storage. And we put this new contract under here. And that's already the full method to change the, the contract owner. Of course, you, you could still do more checks here that, for example, you you don't want to allow the, the zero address, for example. You, you could use that to basically um, make the contract unusable. So you could still uh, check that um, the new contract is not equals the hash zero. But we'll leave that. So ongoing. Now we want to receive gas and only gas. And for this, we write an on NEP17 payment method. And it has this structure. It needs the annotation on NEP17 payment so that the method doesn't matter. It will enforce the, the standard with this annotation. What it needs to have is that it doesn't return anything and that it has the, the from hash 160, the amount, and arbitrary data. Then in here, for example, we want that data is always null, so that if it's if it's if it's not null, we'll throw 
an exception. No data allowed. Then we make various checks that, for example, from is not null. Then, sorry. Then that it's a valid hash. And if it's zero, so if it's either null, if it's not valid, or if it's zero, then we'll throw an exception. Invalid sender provided. And if that passes, I've written here that we only want to receive cast. So we have to do a check, which is the calling contract or just the calling script hash. And we have just have to check if the calling script hash is the gas token. Get calling script hash. If it's unequal gas token, get hash. Then we'll throw another exception. Only gas accepted. And that's how you can receive gas and refuse every other NAP17 token that's sent to your address. Then we want to emit an event that's called gas payment and has two parameters from and amount when we receive a gas payment. For that, we use the event interface that we have in the out event You went to arguments, which takes a hash and an integer. And it's called on payment. I'll show you quickly why, because then we can add it here on payment.fire. And then we can fire it with the arguments from and amount. But now you may asking it's it's not called gas payment. We can make the same use as this display name here on the contract and do the same here. Then we can do this payment. Now the event will be called gas payment, but it may be more natural if you can use this name here. Now, of course, we also want to withdraw that gas and we want that only the contract owner can withdraw the gas, nobody else. For that, we have to provide a verification method. which uses this annotation on verification. Again, the same as with the onnap 17 payment, this annotation uh, enforces the standard. And in here, we just want to check that whoever wants to spend the funds from that contract is the, the contract owner. So return a check witness from the contract owner and that's it so if it passes it'll return true and then the transfer will be allowed if it returns false it'll not be allowed and then last but not least we can call another contract and let's say we just want to get the gas balance but call it from on, on the gas token. Get contract gas balance. Now, how we do that is we do a contract.call. And in that call, 
you have four arguments. One is what contract to call, then the method, then what should be allowed, what actions should be allowed on that contract, and arguments. So we want to use the gas token. Then we want to invoke the method balance off. And now we have call flags. And here you can choose between those options here. Now that we haven't uh, added the add permission here, the contract is not really allowed to, to call anything else than just read. So we just want read states. That way is only allowed to, to read from the contract, but not do anything else. And then, of course, as you know, maybe already know the balance of method in the NEP 17 standard, you need to add an argument, a parameter. And that's basically an object list. And in that object list, we pack the wrong runtime. Get executing script hash. And this executing script hash is the contract we are in. This contract will execute this code here. So we call the gas token balance of only read with that parameter. Now, since we don't know what call will return from, from the li library as, uh, perspective, um, we return an object here. So you have to first cast it to an int to use it as an integer. And then you can return it. Now you may ask, this is quite cumbersome with this huge contract call method. Um, it's quite generic, so you can make you can use it for any any call you want. But for the gas token, we have we provide wrappers. Um, then you can make use. Let let let's uh, write the same the same uh, code again using that wrapper. You can just use the gas token from the dev pack, balance of, then the runtime, get executing script hash, and return that. Also, both methods are safe, so you can note that here. As you can see in this wrapper, it's basically just a class, and it's annotated with this contract hash. And this this uh, script hash, that's the, the address of the gas token. Extends a fungible token. In here, you have a transfer method, then extends a token. Has all these standard methods, then you can use. If, if you want to develop your own uh, contract, you can just create your, your own interface for it, and then also use uh, a short version of it instead of always just use contract call. So yeah, now let's let's test this contract and see that that it works. Let's go in this class here. Now we're in the test module with the the test class, and here you can see the first thing is the contract test annotation. Basically, what, what we use for the tests is uh, a Docker container. So once I, I run the tests, a Docker container, container will, will be run. And within that container, we will run a Neo Express. And to, to configure what we want to use for that Neo Express instance. We can uh, define here, we want that contract to be deployed there. We want a block time of one second. 
then we want the config file default.newexpress to be used, which is here in the, res in the resources. And you can also con configure a batch file. Here, this setup batch. This setup batch is just a simple script that will be executed once the new Express instance starts the blockchain. Then you'll just fund these two accounts that we have in the new Express wallet, Alice and Bob. Then here, this register and extension is a JUnit extension that starts this contract, uh, starts this Docker container with the Neo Express instance. Then here we have the two addresses of Alice and Bob. And here we have a deploy configuration to deploy the Hello World smart contract. In our example, as you may remember here in the deploy method, we want to pass data upon deployment so that we can set the owner of the contract here. So we have to, to pass this the hash of the owner. And here we can just use this config, set the deploy parameter to a contract parameter hash 160 and get the account from this contract's test extension from Alice. Then here is a quick setup. The Nyao3j instance, which is an interface from, from our Java code to, to a Neo blockchain. You can issue RPC, uh, RP calls to the chain and also send raw transactions to change the state of the blockchain. Then we get the contract, the Hello World smart contract. And we get Alice account and Bob account. Now, first, we want to test whether the deployment was successful and get the contract owner that it, it is set correctly to, to Alice. So I've prepared a little here. Test get owner. So here we have a call invoke function. Um, it makes use of this, this contract. This contract is a smart contract in the SDK, which uh, has holds multiple methods, for example, invoke function or, or call functions. And important to note here is that the, the methods we, we call call, call function return string, will just directly return a string. These are all just using the, the RPC invoke function. So it doesn't change any state on the chain. So you can just safely use those methods and just read from the contract. And here, we just want to read from the contract. We just want to get the contract owner, but we don't want to change anything. So we can use this call invoke function. And we invoke this get contract owner and then we will verify here that on the stack, the address is Alice's address. And we can run that. Now the Docker container is started up. The Neo Express instance will run. We'll deploy the contract with this Alice address and then check whether that method returns the correct value and it passes now we want to change the contract owner by the way you, you can ignore this order because it's just important because i will later in the tests send some gas and then withdraw it again so the or order is just important for that and yeah so here we'll again just call get contract owner, verify that it's Alice, and then we will have to write some code here to change it. And then after that, we want to call it again, this get contract owner, and then it should be Bob. So here, what we can do is now we, 
remember we want to change the state of the chain so we don't want to use a call invoke function we want to use just invoke function which will return a transaction builder so we want to call this change contract owner and then we pass the new owner as a contract parameter hash 160 which should be Bob. And this is now a transaction builder. So what this function here does, what this method does, is it builds a script and then initializes a transaction builder. And on that transaction builder, you can do various things. You can, for example, an advanced a uh, use of extend script you can you can add another invoke function script or you can add additional fees you can just call the the, the script that this builder has or uh, change the order of of the designers and stuff like that but what we want to do now is we want to set the signers of the the transaction and what we want we want to set the <clears throat> signer as called by entry, and it should be Alice, because as you remember, if you want to change, we have a check witness here, and Alice is the contract owner currently. This will just return a transaction builder again. Then we can use the sign method, which builds the transaction and then adds the necessary witness that we defined here in the signers and will receive a transaction. And this transaction is already ready to be sent. So we'll get a response and then we verify that this response does not have an error. If it doesn't have an error, it went through. And before checking now that the contract owner has changed, we need to await that the transaction went through. Our response, get hash, and pass the interface to the chain. Now, what that does sure that the transaction went through fully and already changed the state so when we call this invoke function here when we call this method here this transaction is already persisted on the chain and we should receive bob as the new owner I'll let that run and <clears throat> we'll shortly see that it passes yes so these two methods run well the deployment is uh, passed this method works as well and here as well of course you could add more tests to to check to to pass an invalid new contract owner or to to use another signer that it shouldn't pass Now we want to receive payment. Best receive payment. For this, we have uh, wrappers. This is the, the gas token here. The gas token in the SDK that extends a fungible token and just basically has these, these methods. You can make use of them here, let me go back. So we have to initialize them and map them, like provide them the correct interface to the, the correct uh, chain, to this local Neo Express instance. Then we can make use of, of the wrapper method, get balance off, pass the contract, script hash. And here we already know that we, we didn't pay anything to the contract, so we could assert that it's zero. But to, to make it a bit more generic and independent from other tests, 
we just store this as a balance before. Then we specify the amount here, which is, I chose 12.345. And here you need to know that you can't just use 12.345, but as you probably already know, the gas token has eight decimals. So this basically would mean that you should pass in the script this amount, but it's not really user friendly, so you can use this two fractions, which will uh, convert this decimal value to the correct to the correct value that I've just written be before, with the correct uh, amount of decimals. Then you can make use of the transfer method, which is in the end just another invoke function that calls the the transfer method and this returns a transaction builder then you add a signer you add bob because you want to send from bob to the contract you send the signer to bob you sign it send it you get the response and get the hash you can do that all in once then you await the execution and then you will check the balance of the contract again and then you verify that the balance afterwards is the same as before plus the amount that you've just sent. Now, what we also can do, as you may remember here, we added an on payment event. We can check that the transaction, the application log of the transaction actually emitted this this event that is actually on the application log of that transaction. For this, we can just use Nya3j object and use this RPC here. If you want to make other RPCs, you can just use Nya3j dot, and then you can use those, those methods here. Important to say here, this invoke function here is not the wrapper as above, this is actually just a RP call, so this doesn't change the state either. So then we get the application log, then we check for the notifications. It actually has two, because remember we called the gas contract first, and that contract then called the on NEP17 payment method on our Hello World smart contract. And the gas token itself also issues uh, amidst a, a transfer event. So we have two. We have the transfer event from the gas token and our gas payment event from, from the Hello World smart contract. And here we'll, we'll check that this second notification is indeed named gas payment. It comes from our contract. And it contains Bob's address as the from address and the amount. We can run this and continue in the meantime. Now we want to test that only gas is accepted. So we'll refuse Neo. Same as with the gas before. We can use the Neo token wrapper. And here we don't need to use the two fractions because it doesn't have any decimal places. You could still use it, but it will just not change it because it has decimal zero. Then we assert that this code here will throw. And as you may notice, we, we didn't even send this transaction. The, the thing is, when we sign this transaction, in the sign method, the transaction is built. And when building it, we have to check what are the system fees for that script, for, for, that, uh, for that transaction. And for that, uh, we do an RPC and also for, for the network fee. And in there, you don't even get the fee because it will just uh, respond that, that the transaction faulted and through an exception. 
and then we'll catch we'll get this this exception in in our SDK and throw a transaction configuration exception and then we will assert that the message of this exception contains this only guess accepted that we threw here because it's not the gas token that would be received. Also, really important, if you want to receive NEO, here in the example, we receive only gas, but, but if you want to receive only NEO, that that is a bit dangerous. No, it's, it's not dangerous, but you can't do it because um, if you just receive NEO, once you want to withdraw or you want to accept NEO again, it will automatically claim the gas that you own, that, that you are rewarded from holding the NEO. So when you claim the gas, the gas token will be called and it will call again this onnap 17 payment method on your contract and it will fail because you only accept NEO. So remember, if you just want to receive NEO, you also have to handle receiving gas. Then we'll withdraw the gas. Here, we just do a transaction from the gas token. We check the balance before. Based on, on the order here, it, it will be 12.345, then we'll transfer from the contract to Alice the full contract balance. And in here, we need to have a sender that pays the transaction fees. And in this case, this is Alice. And Alice is also the contract owner. So with that scope, Alice is, uh, will will uh, pass this on the verification check witness in here so she can actually withdraw the funds. Then we need a contract signer that is specified here. We have a, a wrapper for that. That's called contract signer. And it's just the contract. This here is important because it, it uh, specifies how the verification method will be called. So as you can see here, we don't have any arguments in here. So we can just pass that we need the contract. Then we'll sign, send it, and assert that everything has been refunded. Now here, if, if you want to, to add some complexity to, to the verify method, for example, you want that always, um, a name is called that that is Nyaudri J. And if it's not passed, then you throw an exception. Then you can do that. Now you can pass here a contract parameter string Nyaudri J. <coughs> you can run it. This should pass as well, and we'll check that if it's not exactly this string, it will not pass. I'll quickly wait until the test has finished. This should pass. Now we are running it again. Now it shouldn't pass. I can already remove that and continue. As you've seen, it didn't pass because, as I've said before, in the transaction builder, something went wrong. The, the network fee couldn't be fetched correctly because already in that RPC, an exception is thrown from the SDK. Then we test the call another contract. Here, we also just need to call. 
call this method get contract balance and check that the integer is this amount remember the order it will be between the receive and the withdraw and then we can also test the last method this here and this here let me just fill that here we basically just do the same we call this other method and verify that it's this amount again let's just run all the tests and if everything passes we've successfully tested our smart contract oh it failed of course because i still have this in here if i remove that and in here it's also yeah it's not here so now everything should pass Now, if you, it still fails, sorry about that. Oh, here, yeah, sorry about that. Now I still have this, had this parameter here and it fails because it doesn't have a verify method with, with no meter, so it fails. So now, if you want to deploy, you can go to this deploy. Uh, and now you see everything passes and you can go to this deployment here and in here you can specify what you want to use uh what what address you want to use to deploy and what what node in here that's just a, a local node you could set that to testnet if you want to de uh, deploy on testnet or even to mainnet then you build this new 3 j object you get the, the account from from the WIF. Here you you check that the balance is not zero. Well, in in the local one, in a private node, it may happen that that you forget to fund this address when when starting up the the blockchain. And then here you just deploy, and you can compile the contract here programmatically, and then fetch. The, the NEF file and the manifest from this compilation unit at the signers and then sign, send, the same as in the tests. Then await and check that the state was not fault. Also, for this uh, compile, we have a Gradle plugin that's uh, specified in the build.gradle. In here, the Nyao3j compiler. In here, you can specify a class name that is here the, the Hello World smart contract. And with that, you can just go to the command line and you can print Nyao3j compile. And this will compile your files uh, without the, the need of this, this pro, pro, programmatical way here. So the compilation with the Gradle plugin was successful and you, you have now your NEF file, your manifest file and a debug info zip file. And you can find that in here and the build in the author j And with that, you can also use those to, to deploy the contract using another SDK or yeah. Yes, that would be it from my side. Um, one more thing. Um, of course, you can also, as you've seen here, I've used IntelliJ for this workshop. You can also use uh, VS Code for that and make use of, of, the, of the toolkit, as I've seen in the presentation some days ago by, by Harry. Um, yeah. I'm open for questions. Thank you all for listening.
Thank you very much for that informative presentation, Michael. And as Michael said, we will now open up the session to questions from the audience. If you have a question, please enter it into the DevLog text channel and we will pass them on to Michael. And Michael or Gil, while we are waiting for questions, do you have any general tips or recommendations for developers that are entering the Polaris Hackathon and how to use Neo 3WJ properly? I definitely uh, suggest that, that you make use of this, this great feature here with, with, the, with the test. Um, with the test uh, framework that we have here, because it's really nice to to set up a, a chain with a with a compiled uh, contract already, with pre-funded uh, accounts. Um, yeah, that that's really smooth if if you want to to test your 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 contract extensively. I think on on that uh, kill. Guild and Cloud would agree. Um, for for the folks that are already used um, with with Java or or even Kotlin, um, they know that the the test framework used there is the JUnit. So uh, here is not different. So our test framework is really well integrated to the JUnit, uh, the the usual JUnit framework. So you can you can explore and you can basically feel home. Um, uh, in your in your Java ecosystem, yeah, that's that's what I, I would add. Thank you, Gil and Claude. Okay, all right. Uh, we do have a question from Roman Kimov, and he says, if I understand correctly, an exception thrown from on NEP seventeen payment can be caught by the caller. Is there any way to abort the transaction in on NEP seventeen payment handler? in the on NEP 17 payment handler. You mean with, uh, with an assert, for example, with an assert opcode or abort opcode? Um, actually, we, we have an issue open for the assert statement because currently our assert statement, like if you use assert and data equals null, then this will just translate to, to a throw exception currently. But we'll have an issue that has highest priority to transform that to, to an actual assert uh, opcode on the Neo VM. And if that's so, then it can't be caught. So when you will use that on probably the next release, from our side, then it will be able to to circumvent that. Yes. Does Excellent. That answer the question. Uh, Roman, does that answer the question? Roman's typing right now, Michael, and he says yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If I need to await in tests for transactions to get to the next block, does it affect the test running time? And how can I improve it if I have a complex contract with a lot of tests? Yes, as far as I remember, uh, you have to wait. Uh, Claude is already also typing. <laughs> you have to wait until it's executed. I don't. Claude, Claude likes to to answer. Yeah, that that is an issue that um, we we are dependent on on the chain on the underlying chain. I mean, Neo Express is it is, and uh, so if you really have complex tests, then these these can take a while. Um, to so it's not it, it looks like unit test right because we we're working with the, with j unit but it feels more like an integration test at some point if you if you have to um test time time sensitive things then you do have to produce a couple of blocks uh, which i like new express uh, is coming up with a new feature in this in this direction where you can where you can say i want to have a new block which is in the future uh, in a in a specific time span but of course um, tell that block you you will have to produce a couple of blocks in between, um, or if you need if you actually need like a hundred blocks to produce those, it takes a bit of time, and um, that that can can lead to to slow tests. Yeah. Um, I I'll ha I'll, I'll like to add something or maybe ask Raman. I mean, it's not usual that the 
the audience get questions, but this would be a very good use case for us that nowadays we are relying on New Express uh, to, you know, in a Docker container to, to integrate with our, um, um, you know, test framework in Java. But, um, I mean, maybe an additional way of e executing tests will be um, if we could, uh, like, translate NeoGo, or not translate, but um, compile NeoGo um, as a shared library um, or as a library. Uh, I know that Go, you can you can compile to C, um, you know, as a C a shared library, and then and then from our Java code, we could programmatically um, send you know transactions or start a node locally in a in a, in a control environment uh, without having to rely on this heavy things like Docker and uh, other tools. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't know if uh, Roman has any, any opinion on that uh, or if, if he ever tried to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that, that'll be, that'll be uh, like uh, one, one option, you know, to speed up um, the, the, the tests and, 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 and go for, for this. Okay, he says he's still here. Uh, hopefully uh, yeah. he can unmute and talk to us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, probably something like that, wrapping NeoGo probably is possible uh, and making use of it uh, in the Java environment. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly technically that would uh, be done, but uh, I think it's possible. And uh, the thing is that we actually, in the Neo test framework that we have, we uh, are in complete control of the chain and uh, um, we basically produce blocks as we need them so there is no timer uh, uh, there is no single node environment with uh, the timer associated that stamps blocks uh, once uh, in a second uh, you basically create blocks as you need and uh, that uh, allows for uh, to create a hundred blocks if you need, or just uh, to push uh, the transaction that you oh sorry uh, that you want to execute uh, in the block within milliseconds. So that's it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that that that'll be. Um, I, I think like technically is 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 possible uh, if you if you if you have like all these functions. Um, expose like to start the chain and the choose to to send transactions and you have all this 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 fa facade let's say yeah. and um, and then we could we could just uh, compile this for um, different uh, as a shared library to different platforms like ARM, uh, AMD, sixty four and others and then we could uh, replace or or have another alt alternative to our uh, test framework. Because like nowadays we support all the functions in our test framework that uh, New Express uh, supports because it's Dockerized. But I mean, just to answer the question in for the audience, uh, I think this, um, uh, yeah, is not very um, fast to run all the tests if you have many in our test framework. Uh, but it it feels like integration tests, so you are really sure that um, you know if executed. It it to be um, yeah it to be executed the same like in a in a in a real environment because it's it's really close um, the execution environment yeah that's it all right well thank you Gil and thank you Roman and Claude is there any other tips or ideas for DApps or anything that you would like to pass on to any of the developers here that might be in the Polaris Hackathon just Keep going and, and use our tools and don't hesitate to, to ask questions and directly open issues also on, on GitHub. We really appreciate that if you find a bug or anything. And yeah, as I've said, we, we don't bite. Just just uh, <laughs> just yeah. ask us. And, and, and our family is growing because uh, we in the past we had um, like Nekohit it, the DAP was uh, written in, in, in Java, like the contracts was written in Java in the Alpha J. 
and then uh, new candy, you know, came also to the family and they're writing all the stuff uh, in Java and, and uh, I think like Kotlin in Java um, using the L3J. Uh, now Grand Shares, uh, Grand Shares app is also um, uh, using the L3J. Um, so th there are already some 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 smart contracts uh, there um, in the mainnet uh, which use our tools. And besides this, I don't know if you if you've seen our our um, our last tweet from from the X Labs uh, Twitter account that um, yeah we, we we just disclosed some of uh, our users. For example, Binance uh, Binance Chain they use uh, our, our tool. Uh, uh, Binance Exchange use our tools, um, also OKX, like some some in some other exchanges. So yeah, uh, the family is growing. So just use it, ask us questions, as me, as Michael said, and uh, have fun. That's it. Agil, before you run away, you did mention Grand Shears. Please tell people what Grand Shears is and if it's open for business yet for devs to put in applications. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I would just, I would just like tell that Grand Shares is a great venue uh, for if you have an idea in a new ecosystem um, and, and you want to materialize it. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, um, I mean, if, if it's something that you believe, that you, that you, that you, that you think that um, can be, can, you, you, you can experiment in, on the new N3 chain, um, come up with a proposal. So just go to grandchairs.io. Um, uh, the DAP is not yet available to submit proposals, but you can sign up, uh, and then you can stay tuned um, because we're gonna we're gonna let our community uh, know that we are we're gonna open the doors uh, when you open the doors, and then you have to be ready for submit the, your proposal. So yeah, by submitting your proposal, you can get a bit of a funding for to materialize your idea. So that's uh, that's it. Um, I hope. Yeah, I think uh, Robert is is pasting the link there also. Grandshares.io, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, let's uh, let's build something. So everyone, open up your mics for a big hearty goodbye, please, for a second. Goodbye. Cheers, guys. Thanks for thanks everyone. Thanks, Fantastic. Thank you for Bye. listening.